A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 25th of August 2022. So displayed here are the list of news articles that we are going to discuss today. We have four different news articles. So without much delay, let's get into the first news article discussion. Look at this news article. It is about the Competition Amendment Bill 2022. The article explains the amendments proposed in the bill. So in this discussion, we are going to see the important amendments proposed in the bill and how it is different from the Parent Act 2002. Before that, the syllabus relevant to this news article is highlighted here for your reference. Just go through it. First of all, let us see some of the basics. See, the Indian Competition Act was passed in the year 2002 and it came into force seven years later. And as per the Act, a Competition Commission of India was established. See, this commission looks after the anti-competitive practices in the market. Here, CCI primarily looks after the issues of anti-competitive agreements, abuse of dominance and combinations. If you want to know more about CCI, watch 23rd August analysis. We have covered CCI exclusively in that discussion. Now, coming to the amendments proposed in the bill. See, the first one that we are going to see is about the combinations. Now, you may wonder what is this combination? See, it is nothing but acquisition merging or amalgamation of enterprises see according to section 5 of the parent act if any party involved in any acquisition merger or amalgamation then they have to notify about the combination to cci on the basis of asset value or turnover value but in the proposed amendment bill deal value threshold is added so, as per this new provision, parties have to notify the commission if the deal value is more than 2000 crore and if either of the parties has substantial business operations in India. Okay? So, to understand this better, let me explain this with an example. Let us say party A is merging with party B. This merger is happening with a deal value of 300 crores. This means that party A is paying party B 300 crore. But the assets that party A gains from this merger is worth 1500 crores only. So earlier in the parent act, the parties have to notify the commission about this asset value only, which is 1500 crores. But according to the amendment bill, the parties have to notify the CCI if the deal value is more than 2000 crores. And also if either of the parties has substantial business operations in India. And regarding the second part, the CCI will frame regulations to prescribe the conditions required for assessing whether an enterprise has substantial business operations in India or not. Okay, so here you must know why or they proposing the amendments. See, the major reason for this is earlier a majority of the combinations happened without reporting to the CCI. This is because the asset or turnover values did not meet the jurisdictional thresholds. But now, the amendment will help the CCI to know about the combinations. And this change will strengthen the commission's review mechanism. So now coming to the second amendment. See, it is a continuation of the first one. It is about the time period of approval of the combination. See, we saw that parties should inform about the combination to the commission, right? And after this, the commission may approve or disapprove the combination. There is a time frame available for CCI to take this decision. See, according to Parent Act, the commission has 210 days to approve the combination. And after this period, it is automatically approved. But according to the amendment bill, the time frame has been reduced from 210 working days to 150 working days with a conservatory period of 30 days for extensions. 
okay the main reason for proposing this amendment is that this will speed up the clearance of combinations and it will also increase the importance of pre-filing consultations with the commission okay hope you can understand this now coming to the third amendment see it is regarding the penalty for gun jumping here let us take a quick detour and understand what gun jumping is. See we saw that parties have to notify the commission regarding the combinations right and they have to materialize the combination only after the commission approved it. But certain parties will close a transaction before the approval of the commission or it will consummate a reportable transaction without bringing it to the commission's knowledge. So this act is called gun jumping. So now coming back, according to the Parent Act, the penalty for gun jumping is a total of 1% of the asset or turnover. But based on the amendment that is proposed now, the penalty for gun jumping is 1% of the deal value. So now moving on to the next amendment. It is regarding the open market purchases and stock market transactions. See in the past, the commission has witnessed many gun jumping cases. When inquiring about them, the parties said that they did the transaction to consummate the open market purchases and stock market transactions. We all know that the value of these purchases changes every day, right? If the parties wait for the commission's clearance, the transaction may become unaffordable. And that's exactly why there have been cases regarding gun jumping. To address this, the amendment bill has proposed to exempt open market purchases and stock market transactions from the requirement to notify them to the commission in advance. So they don't have to notify CCI in advance about open market purchase and stock market transactions. Here also you have to note one thing, there is a condition for this. The condition is that the parties can make transactions regarding open market purchases and stocks but they cannot exercise voting or ownership rights until the transaction is approved. Now coming to the next amendment it is about the hub and spoke arrangement. See it is a kind of cartelization. According to CCI a cartel includes an association of producers, sellers, distributors, traders or service providers. They as a group limit, control or attempt to control the production, distribution, sale or price of goods and services. Can you guess what this leads to? This is interfering in the market operation. This action will restrict the competition in the market. This amount to unfair market practices and it will benefit one party. Okay. Now, as per Parent Act, the prohibition on anti-competitive agreements only covers entities with similar trades. That is, entities doing same identical or similar businesses. But now, as per the amendment, the scope of anti-competitive agreements is broadened to catch entities that facilitate cartelization even if they not engaged in identical trade practices. Okay? So the main reason for this amendment is that the provision in the Parent Act ignores the hub and spoke cartels operating at different levels of the vertical chain by distributors and suppliers. Okay, so these are the main and important amendments that you have to make note of. Others includes framework for settlement and commitments for cases relating to vertical amendments and abuse of dominance. See, according to the amendment, the commission's decision regarding commitment or settlement will not be appealable after hearing all stakeholders in the case. Okay, and the next one is a provision called Lenancy Plus. It allows the commission to give a waiver of penalties to an applicant if he discloses the existence of another cartel in an unrelated market. Here, the main condition is that the information given by the applicant about another cartel should enable the commission to form a prima facie opinion about the existence of the cartel. Okay, And the next one is the appointment of the director general by the commission rather than the central government and this gave the commission greater control. This is because the director general has the power to conduct investigations including rates. And the next one is that the commission will only consider information filed within three years of the occurrence of the cause of action. Okay. And the next notable amendment is related to penalty guidelines. For any false information field, a penalty of 5 crore will be imposed. And for failure to comply with the commission directions, a penalty of rupees 10 crore will be imposed. 
for an appeal to be heard by the National Company Law Tribunal that is NCLT against the commission's order the party will have to deposit 25 percentage of the penalty amount okay and these are about the amendments mentioned in the news article see as per the article it is said that the proposed amendment are needed in every way this is because the commission should be better equipped to handle certain aspects of the new age market and it should transform its functioning to be more robust Finally, according to the author, the government needs to recognize that the market dynamics are changing constantly and it is necessary to update laws regularly. Okay, but still you can note a lot of takeaway points from this text and context article. That is why we have chosen this news article. Okay, so with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this news article. The news article states that the spell of rainfall that the state of Tamil Nadu is experiencing may continue till the weekend. It also states that the city of Chennai will experience isolated spells of thunderstorms. So this is about the news article. In this context, let us revise about thunderstorms, its characteristics and its formation. Okay. Firstly, what is a thunderstorm? See, it is nothing but a violent and intense weather phenomenon. It occurs in a small area for a short duration. As the name itself suggests, this weather phenomenon is accompanied by heavy thunder and lightning. See, since this weather activity is always accompanied by thunder and lightning, it is also called an electric storm. Okay? It causes heavy rain for a short period of time and in some cases it can also result in hail. Here, hail is nothing but small balls or irregularly lumps of ice. So, thunderstorms are also called hailstorms. When lumps of ice fall from the sky along with rain, we call it as hailstorms. Okay? So, that's all about thunderstorms and its characteristics. Now, let us see the formation process of thunderstorms. See, actually it involves three stages. First is the towering cumulus stage. See, in this stage, there is intense heating of land due to solar insulation. As the land heats up, the air above land also heats up. As hot air is lighter, it starts rising. When it starts rising, cumulus clouds are formed. Okay? Now, this is the first stage. Now, coming to the second stage, which is the mature stage, when hot air starts rising, there will be an empty space crater, right? So, the air surrounding the area starts rushing in to fill the gap. Once they reach, this air parcel also gets heated up and starts rising up. Once this happens, then a new parcel of air from the surrounding area comes in and fills up the gap. This movement of hot air up is called updraft. Okay? This cylindrical process repeats itself for a number of times. Due to this, the cumulus cloud transforms into a larger unveiled shaped cumulonimbus cloud. Once this happens, the area will start receiving rain due to downpour that happens in the cloud. So, in the mature stage, on one side, due to updraft, hot air rises and builds up the size of the cloud. On the other hand, due to downdraft, rainfall occurs and reduces the size of the cloud. When there is an equilibrium between updraft and downdraft, the size of the cumulonimbus cloud does not increase further. So, this is when the storm reaches the final stage. The final stage is the dissipation stage. See, in this stage, intense precipitation takes place. Due to heavy rain, the land cools down. As the land cools down, the air above it also cools down. Once this happens, there won't be any updraft. This is because cold air is heavier and it does not rise up. On the other hand, due to downdraft, rainfall will occur. The rainfall will continue to occur till there is presence of cumulonimbus cloud. Once the cloud ceases to exist, rainfall will stop. So, this is how the thunderstorms form and dissipate. So, in this news article discussion, we saw in brief about thunderstorms, its characteristics and we also saw the three stages of formation of the thunderstorms. See, very important news article with respect to preliminary examination. Every year with respect to geography, we have preliminary questions on very basic topics like these. For example, in 2022 prelims itself, we had a question about clouds, right? Likewise, whenever you see an important article like these, try to revise the basics about the concept. So, with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. 
See this article here. It talks about the visit of olive ridley turtles to the state of Tamil Nadu. It also mentions about the efforts of the Tamil Nadu Forest Department and volunteer-led citizen groups for the conservation of the species. So this is the crux of the news article given here. Using this as an opportunity, let us see some of the facts about olive ridley in prelims perspective. See, olive ridleys are considered to be the most abundant sea turtle in the world. They look very familiar to Kemp's ridley sea turtle. The two species are the smallest of the all sea turtles. Now, talking about its physical characteristics, they get their name from the coloring of their heart-shaped shell. Know that the shell starts out gray in color but becomes olive green once the turtle grow into adults. Okay, they have one to two visible claws on each of their pedal-like flippers. Okay, you can see that on the image given here. See the size and the form of olive ridley varies from region to region. Know that the largest animal are observed in West Africa. Now coming to the habitat, see the olive ridley is found in the tropical regions of the Pacific, Atlantic and Indian Oceans. So it is found in the region of warm waters. Okay, now moving on to some of the important characteristics. See the olive ridleys, they are omnivorous, meaning they feed on both plants and animals. This includes algae, lobster, crabs, mollusks, shrimp and fish. Okay. Know that olive ridley turtles or marine reptiles like any other sea turtles, they must come to the surface to breathe. And the most important attribute is the aribada nesting. See, olive ridleys migrate hundreds and thousands of miles every year for the aribada nesting. Here aribada means arrival in Spanish. It happens when large groups of females return to the same beaches where they were hatched once to lay eggs. Okay. So, in simple terms, Aribadas are massive nesting aggregations where thousands of females arrive in simultaneous waves to lay their eggs. The factor causing this phenomenon is still unknown. Okay. Also remember, olive red leaves, female usually nest one to three times per season and it lays an average of 100 to 110 eggs per clutch. Know that the eggs incubate for 50 to 60 days. Now coming to the threats faced by olive red leaves, see one of the main threat include harvesting of the turtles for skin and meat. Apart from this, accidental capture in fishing nets also contribute to the reduction of olive red leaves. Another factor is the loss and degradation of nesting habitat. The destruction and consumption of eggs and hatchlings by non-native and native predators also result in the reduction of numbers. The final and the most important of all is marine pollution caused by anthropogenic factors. So all these are some of the threats faced by olive red leaves. So that's all about this news article discussion. In this news article discussion, we saw in detail about olive red leaves. We saw about its habitat. We saw about some of its important characteristics as well. So with these learnt bonds, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now for our final discussion, let us take up this news article. See, the news article says that Karnataka State Contractors Association has raised a complaint. The complaint is against the Karnataka government. The members of the Karnataka State Contractors Association are claiming that certain MLAs of the ruling Karnataka government are seeking 40% commission the Chief Minister of Karnataka has termed this allegation as baseless. He challenged that if the Karnataka State Contractors Association has proof of this allegation, they could take the matter to the Karnataka Lokayukta. So, this is about the news article given here. In this context, let us focus on Lokpal and Lokayukta in prelims perspective. First of all, let us see about Lokpal. See, Lokpal is established under the Lokpal and Lokayukta Act 2013. The main function of Lokpal is to inquire and investigate into allegations of corruption against public functionaries who are falling within the ambit of this act. Now, let us see about the membership. See, the Lokpal consists of a chairperson and members who shall be not more than 8 in number. So, it includes a chairperson. And the number of members in Lokpal should not be more than 8. Okay. Note that the person to be appointed as the chairperson of the Lokpal must be either the former Chief Justice of India or the former Judge of the Supreme Court 
or an eminent person with integrity and outstanding ability who must possess special knowledge and a minimum experience of 25 years in matters relating to anti corruption policy public administration vigilance finance including insurance and banking law and management okay see out of the total members 50 percentage of the members shall be judicial members the remaining 50 percentage is the non judicial members and the judicial members of the lokpal must be either a former judge of the supreme court or a former chief justice of the high court and at least half of the lokpal members must be from scheduled caste scheduled tribes other backward classes minorities and women okay know that chairperson and the judicial members are appointed by the president on the recommendation of a selection committee the selection committee consists of the prime minister as a chairman and the speaker of lok sabha leader of opposition in the lok sabha chief justice of india or judge of supreme court nominated by him and one eminent jurist as member okay so now having seen the membership we will focus on its jurisdiction see the lokpal has jurisdiction to enquire into allegations of corruption against public functionaries who are or who have been in the office including the prime minister minister in the union government mps officials of union government under group a b c and d also functionaries of any board corporation society trust or autonomous body either established by an act of parliament or wholly or partly funded by the union or state government or also covered under the ambit of lokpal see make note of these very very important with respect to preliminary examination now coming back it also covers and society or trust or body that receives foreign contributions about rupees 10 lakh okay now moving on see for the center we have lokpal and for the states we have lokayukta that's it but remember its structure is not the same in all states some states have created only lokayukta and some states created both lokayukta and upalokayuktas whereas some have designated officials as lokpal okay the members are appointed by the governor of the state in consultation with the chief justice of the state high court and the leader of opposition in the state legislative assembly like i mentioned above there is no uniformity regarding the jurisdiction of lokayukta in all states see annually the lokayukta presents to the governor of the state a consolidated report on its performance the governor places this report before the state legislature we have to note here that the recommendations made by the lok ayukta are only advisory and not binding on the state government okay so that's all about lokpal and lok ayukta so in this news article discussion we saw in detail about lokpal members of the lokpal its jurisdiction and some of its power then we saw about lok ayukta so with these learned points in mind now let us move on to the next part of the newspaper analysis which is the preliminary practice questions now look at this first question which of the following pairs are correctly matched on one side name of showers were given and on the other side the places where they occur are given so you have to identify the correctly matched pair okay option a only one pair option b only two pair option c all three pairs and option d no pairs See the correct answer for the question is all three pairs. Here all the three pairs are correctly matched. Kal Paisagi, Bordoi Sila, and Coffee Shower or Pre Monsoon Showers in India. Okay, these intense weather events are examples of thunderstorms. The other important pre monsoon showers in India is the Mango Shower. It occurs in Kerala and Karnataka. Okay, so the correct answer for the question is option C. All three pairs. Now moving on to the second question consider the following statements about olive redley statement 1 olive redley and kemps redley are listed as vulnerable by iucn red list statement 2 aribada phenomenon is observed in olive redleys only which of the above statement is or are correct option a one only option b two only option c both one and two and option d neither one not two see the correct answer for the question is option d 
neither one nor two statement one is incorrect because olive ridleys are listed as vulnerable but kemp's ridley is critically endangered okay statement 2 is also incorrect because arabada nesting is the behavior found only in the genus lepidoclase which includes the hems redley and olive redley sea turtles so it is observed not only in olive redley turtles but it is also observed in kemp's redley also okay so the correct answer for the question is option d neither one nor two so the question displayed here is the first question for you today just go through the question Find the correct answer and post the correct answer in the comment section. I'll post the quiz question in the poll section as well. You can attend the quiz there also. Okay. Now moving on. The displayed question is the main question for you today. Just watching the analysis alone will not help you in the long run. Please try to write answers and post the main answers in the comment section. We'll evaluate your answer and suggest improvements if required. Okay. So with this we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video, hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar Ayes Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.